one traditional way that you would have your cover slip mounted is with cells on it and you'd have media in your flask and the main thing that you need to understand when you're talking about is you need to understand the consequence of the fixation on your specimen and what that's going to mean to you when you start to do microscopy. So an ideal fixative would be something that preserves the three-dimensional architecture of your sample, protects it from light, and all of those types of things. Not going to be easy for all fixatives to accomplish everything that you want. So there's no real perfect fixative, but there are some that are better than others and some that are better for different types of microscopy. The two main types of fixation are precipitating fixation and cross-linking fixation. For precipitating fixation, we normally use some type of organic solvent such as acetone or some type of alcohol, either ethanol or methanol. And these types of fixatives are really good for things like wide field microscopy because they are able to enhance or increase the level of antigenicity that is left However, in your sample. However, it's at a cost. You do dehydrate your sample um, quite a bit, up to 70%, which is going to tremendously change your 3D architecture. Another thing that uh, per, uh, precipitating fixatives do is it strips lipids from your cell or your tissue. And if this is okay with you, if you don't need to look at the lipids, then you basically accomplish your fixation and permeabilization in one step. However, if you need to look at the lipids and the 3D architecture is very important, you don't want dehydration, then a precipitating fixative is not going to be for you. When we go to fix a cell, with a precipitating fixative. This can often be done in ethanol, methanol, and we also do this at, normally at cold temperatures. So you would replace all of the media in your sample vial with your fixative. And normally, uh, depending on what temperature you perform the fixation at, it can take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. Now the next kind of fixation is cross-linking fixation. Cross-linking fixation is normally accomplished with different aldehydes such as paraffamaldehyde or glutaraldehyde. The process that these undergo to maintain 3D architecture is by actually forming bridges between protein groups and between the cell membrane and in fact between the cell itself and whatever it's mounted on. Now one thing that these are great for is actually preserving the three-dimensional architecture of a cell or a tissue. So this is going to be primarily important in, in micros confocal microscopy. So if you're doing confocal you need to make sure that you're doing cross-linking fix fixation. Some of the types are glutaraldehyde or paraffamaldehyde. Glutaraldehyde has some drawbacks in that it has a lot of autofluorescence and if you're doing fluorescent microscopy that's going to be a problem. You're going to have a green, a yellowish green haze in most of your um, images. So what we normally suggest here at Clemson if you're doing this type of confocal work, fluorescence confocal, is yeah, use paraffamaldehyde instead to fix your cells. Paraffamaldehyde can be uh, made from uh, powdered formaldehyde or it can be made from an already prepared high uh, percent solution such as a 16 percent solution as long as it is supplied in capsules such as this which contains it within an inert environment. You want your fixatives to be very fresh otherwise they're not going to accomplish what you uh, what you want them to do. So as long as you get this uh, solution as a, as a higher percent solution than what you're going to use and you, it's in an inner environment then it's great to use. A, this is a 16 percent solution. We use about a 4 percent solution of paraffamaldehyde to fix our cells. Right on top of your cells because you risk loosening your cells from the cover slip. We'll wash twice in the 20 millimolar glycine solution.
and then we'll add 20 millimolar glycine and block our sample for 20 minutes at room temperature. This will ensure that all of my free aldehyde groups from my fixation have been compensated for and I don't get extra autofluorescence in my sample. Again, because I used a, an aldehyde fixation process, the lipids of my sample are intact and I want to use my sample for staining later. And in order to get the stains inside of my cell or tissue, I'm going to have to create holes in the membrane. One good way to do this is with a detergent. There are different types of detergents that you can use, including Triton X100 or Saponin or Saponin. And these are all great detergents to use, but they all need to be made fresh. So it's not okay to leave a 0.1% Triton X100 sitting on your bench top for up to a month. After a while, you're not going to get very good permeabilization. You're not going to get good staining as a result. I'll remove the 20 millimolar glycine. In this case, I'm using 0.1% Triton X100 in a 1x PBS solution. I'll add this again. I'm expelling the liquid down the side of the petri dish, making sure my cover slip is completely covered. And I'll incubate this anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. Now the exact concentration may vary between 0.1% and 0.5%. And the incubation time, again, from 10 to 30 minutes. It really depends on what cells you're using or tissue you're using. And you can only determine this, unfortunately, through a little bit of experimentation. I would suggest starting out with about a 0.1% Triton X100 and a 15 to 20 minute incubation period for the permeabilization step. Once you've permeabilized your cells, you'll then wash them to make sure that they are detergent free and at this point your cells are ready for now, stain. A lot of people ask me things like can I permeabilize, can I fix my cells or can I permeabilize them and then leave them for the next day. Fixation you can however if you do that you run the risk of actually going backwards and in your fixation if you're using an aldehyde. If you're using a cross-linking solution like paraformaldehyde or glutaraldehyde, you can leave them in the refrigerator and some PBS. You need to make sure that they have liquid or they'll dehydrate. However, if you leave them longer than about a day, you're going to have some reversal of your fixation and loss of your 3D art. In really bad cases, you can actually lose structure completely in your cell, which of course is not what you want. So I suggest doing all of this. Go ahead, get up early, come in the lab, do all of your work for your IF, schedule your microscopy appointment in the later afternoon. In the next video, we'll talk more about stain. Thank you.